Sig Sauer is a brand you don't think of as fun. In fact, they'll tell you they aren't a fun brand. I think on Fridays, their employees are allowed to wear colors other than black and gray. But anyway, what SIG is, is a brand that is led by engineers and they seek to innovate. So when SIG decides to do a fun product like a Rimfire 22 pistol, you know it's gonna be significant. The P322 is exactly that. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and this is the Sig Sauer P322, a new 22 trainer pistol from Sig Sauer. Now traditionally with Sig Sauer, they are a defense brand focused on military and Leo contracts. They don't do consumer stuff and this is one of their first consumer products that they've put out. And of course in Sig fashion, they're gonna try and do it in a way that is innovative and disruptive to what the market is already doing. The goal for the pistol is to have fun, to get families shooting together and to introduce people to Sig Sauer as a brand. And to that point, eventually, you know what this gun's going to sell for? You know what? I'll save that for after the mandatory YouTube disclaimers. First and foremost, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to break the 100,000 subscriber benchmark and get my silver play button. It would really mean a lot to me if you could help me in that quest. Second, if you want more information on all the guns I feature here on the channel, you can check out my Patreon. There is a bunch of behind the scenes stuff on this pistol alone. There's two or three posts about kind of the behind the scenes stuff on how this sort of came together. And third, to my YouTube manual reviewer, well. And now's the part of the video where I like to talk to my manual reviewers. You guys like to look at these guns and tell me they're modified. So rather than a manufacturer's website, I have the manufacturer right here next to me. Mr. Phil Schrader, is this gun modified? This gun is not modified and this is how it's offered from the factory. Go continue watching cat videos to manual reviewer. This gun is totally stock as it comes out of the box. So go watch a different video and just let this be monetized. I'd appreciate it. So the way pistol development typically works is everybody takes the product they already have, they refine it, they polish it up, and they re-release it as a new product. And it's just like, okay, well, you've already done this before, but it's a little bit nicer. Ugh. Um, sorry about that, I've got a cold. So if I become a snotty, disgusting mess, you can wear your mask while you watch this video. But when SIG introduces a new offering, other than you know the, the different color variants, because they release like a thousand color variants of the same pistol. But when they release a new product, it usually is something new and disruptive. And that's exactly what the P322 is. And I'm gonna break this video into two parts. The first part talking about how this product is significant and disruptive. And the second part will be more of the traditional review stuff. There's timestamps so you can scroll around and find the stuff that interests you. And of course, for FCC compliance, this is a sample gun sent in. I attended the launch for the P322 in Florida last week. And I say that not to flex like I'm some sort of legitimate media enterprise. Hold on a second. Hey, honey, I'm a legitimate media enterprise now. Haha, <laughs> business cards. But I say that to say that I got to put nearly a thousand rounds through this in a very short period of time with a lot of other people who were there to write all the articles you're gonna read about this gun, all the blog posts that you see on launch day. They were all at the same event. We were all there together, experiencing the guns together. And I was blown away by this little pistol, but we'll talk about why it's significant and then we'll talk about just the review type stuff. So the first reason the P322 is disruptive is simply the capacity. The magazines, it comes with two 20 round magazines. They're made out of polymer and they're pretty darn reliable. 20 rounds of 22 on tap is significantly more fun than just 10. Like a lot of the trainer pistols have 10 round magazines and it's just, it's like shooting a single stack gun. While it's really fun when it's in operation, you spend a lot of time reloading. It's the same problem revolvers have. So sitting there and loading a magazine up to 20 and getting to go out and shoot, like it makes it more fun. So if you were to say go shoot Steel Challenge with the kids, you wouldn't need like five or six magazines. You might only need three, maybe four. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And the price isn't too bad either. They're gonna sell these suckers for about $30, so I'm told but we'll see. And the second reason this product this is disruptive is value. Now Sig Sauer isn't a brand that competes on price typically. Almost all of their products are positioned at the higher end of whatever segment they're competing in, except for this one. This one is going to be allowed to be sold eventually because you know the way new Sig products are is they hit the market, everyone buys them up, the price goes way up, and then on like Gun Broker, you're gonna pay way more than MSRP, but eventually, when that's all done, this thing's gonna sell for $400. And that's just the price. Let's consider what you get. Like it's got a threaded barrel adapter. It is optics ready. It has fiber optic sights with an adjustable rear. Comes with two magazines. I'm not sure what more you want out of a 22 trainer pistol, but as far as I was concerned, this thing has the best 
bill of features that I'm aware of. The third reason isn't all that significant, but is an impressive technical accomplishment, but Sig Sauer states that these guns are dry fire immune. You're not supposed to dry fire rim fire guns. This is an unloaded gun here in my studio, but I do not care about dry firing it because Sig has done all the work for you. They have taken their design validation guns and dry fired them over 5,000 times and the firing pins still work, the guns are still reliable. The fourth disruptive feature about this pistol is reliability. Those same three design validation guns at the point of launch day had over 40,000 rounds a piece with what they did. So that's fairly impressive for a little 22 gun that is introduced at a low price point. Underscoring the point and the reason I mentioned the launch day event, and this is a, a fun little story, so gather around. The reason I brought up the whole launch day thing is because it was significant, because I witnessed these little pistols put out over 2,000 rounds on a single pistol with only a handful of stoppages, most of which ammo related. So in the morning, it was basically broken into kind of getting to know you sessions where there were two groups of people going for 45 minutes to just shoot the guns. So all the legitimate media dudes are over there like having the SIG guys be like hand models for all the cool pictures you're gonna see on the blogs. And then there was me and 22 Plinkster who uh, were basically just, you know, monkeys mashing triggers, uh, having our range officer help us stuff magazines so we could mag dump as fast as possible onto the steel getting to know it. So in a 45 minute morning getting to know you session, I was able to shoot nearly 500 rounds. I'm not exactly sure what that number was, but it was at least four empty things and there was some ammo left in the last container. Because if there's one thing that I'm good at, it's disrespecting other people's ammo costs. So thanks, Sig. Next in the afternoon, we shot six of the eight current steel challenge stages with two of the old school steel challenge stages because somebody at Sig's getting old and actually remembers those. Not going to say who. And we were broken into three squads of seven. We were sent out with 2,100 rounds and we figured out which one of the pistols had the most true sights because with the mini mags, at least in the morning gun, uh, they were impacting a little bit low, but we figured out which one of our guns had a truest point of aim, point of impact, and that was the gun that basically everybody used. This is Battle of the Fanny Packs <laughs> for the title of number one nut and fancy ready? fan. Stand by. Ready, set, go. So to shoot this course as clean, we had about 175 shots that we would have to take in order if we went one for one. In Steel Challenge, almost nobody goes one for one. So we shot a lot through those guns. And of course, at the end of the day, rather than unloading the magazines and putting them back into the ammo boxes like you would if you know it was your ammunition, we decided to just mag dump on steel because that's what legitimate media enterprises do is they mag dump on steel. So I don't know the actual round count on the guns, but I do know that we only brought 400 rounds back from the 2100 we were sent out with, most of which went onto the same pistol. So it's very easy to say that this one pistol had over 2000 rounds on it and these were brand new from the factory. These were not prototypes or anything. It was the same packaging as this production model you see before me. They cracked it open, didn't even oil them. They just sent them out into the world and they ran great. There were a total of five stoppages on our squad, two of which were magazine loading issues and we'll get into that because that if you're gonna have a malfunction, that's probably the most likely malfunction other than bad ammo. So two of which were nose down in the magazines if you don't load the magazines properly, which is a user-induced malfunction. Then there were three light strikes. One light strike was a bad round. The impact on the case rim was super solid, should have gone. The other two malfunctions occurred at the end of the day when the guns were super dirty. And what ends up happening is the top of the barrel gets a bunch of carbon fouling built up on it. So with all that fouling on the hood of the barrel, the slide is held just, you know, a couple thousandths or whatever. It's enough to where the firing pin impact onto the case rim wasn't quite enough to send it. So, I mean, these malfunctions only started appearing after the gun probably had about 1,500 rounds through it. It was at the very end of the day. So that's truly impressive for a service pistol to go through that many rounds without stoppage. But I mean, for a rimfire, that's pretty amazing. And with that, we'll kick it into the review side. So the P322 is a fullish compact size pistol in so much as that it's not like proper full size for like a service gun but it's also kind of fatter and wider. Just imagine like a P365 XL if it got a little bit taller and a little bit fatter, and that's very much what the frame is like on the P322. It has a four inch barrel with the slide and the slide actually is made out of aluminum. I'm sure some of you high speed types want to know what numbers that aluminum is associated with, but I'm not a metallurgist. I'm just a legitimate media enterprise, so don't ask too much for me. But the slide is aluminum, it's lightweight, and when they designed it, reportedly, they designed it with 11 types of different ammunition. So they tuned the slide weight and the recoil spring so that you can go into any big box store and buy whatever 22 ammo that they happen to have. and the 
gun should work reliably. And to that point, the slide profile is such that it will not fit in the holster of the P320. A lot of people are gonna look at that as a miss, but I mean, it's just kind of a technical thing. Just the slides are going to be different thicknesses in order to get the weight where they needed it. This is not like a traditional SIG polymer pistol, which uses a, like a modified Browning tilt lock. This is a fixed barrel. So when you take the gun apart, which is somewhat non-traditional, you lock the slide to the rear, put up the little slide release, you pull the slide to the rear and then lift it up off and there it is. So you can see right there, the barrel is fixed to the front frame and to put the slide back on you have to make sure that the little takedown lever is flipped up just like that. If you can't get the slide back on that's usually what happens is this is not flipped all the way up. You just reverse the process, pull it to the rear, slide it back down, flip the take up lever down and you're back in action. Another interesting feature is that the trigger comes with two different shoes. There is the straight shoe which you see on there and which has a break at about 90 degrees which is for target shooting something that you really like to have. Uh, this is similar to how the P320 Legion uh, straight triggers are set up. It's my preference. They also have a hooked trigger that's included in the box. You're able to swap the trigger shoes yourself. There's two little metal tabs on the back of the trigger. You just kind of push in with your thumb on one and kind of pull it to the outside and then with your other hand push on the bottom of the trigger shoe and the trigger shoe will come off. When install it, it's the reverse. You just kind of click it in. So you're able to do that yourself and get the gun set up how you like. As far as the actual trigger pull is concerned, it is a single action only trigger and it is kind of a rolling brake. Now, it's a very nice rolling brake. I won't say like it's on ball bearings. I mean, it's a 22 pistol for $400. Like in the grand scheme of super expensive triggers, you know, it's kind of in the middle, but for a 22 pistol, it's actually pretty good as far as I'm concerned. On my model, I can't even remember what the trigger pull weight is. I, I think it was just over four pounds. It was not very much. A split is the time from one shot to the next shot, and it, it is a statement to how short the trigger pull throw sort of is and how quickly you're able to reset the gun and recoil and fire the next shot. That's especially important on a 22 pistol where uh, mag dumping 20 round magazines on a plate of steel is a lot of fun, so you're gonna be doing it a lot. But I was able to get down to 15s and 16s once I kind of figured it out at the end of the day, which is pretty sporty for any pistol, especially a rimfire 22. The texture on the gun is what I wish the P365 XL texture is. It's more aggressive than what's on the P365 XL because this frame is not contemplated of rubbing against the smooth, supple stomachs of dad bods like myself. So they made it a little bit more aggressive. And for a sport pistol, that's good because the ergonomics of the frame coupled with the excellent traction and the lighter recoil of a 22 is you are able to get this gun to return to zero very well once you understand how to apply your grip pressure. That's a fancy way of saying that the gun doesn't move if you know how to grip it. And if it's one thing this channel is known for, it's for being fancy. Uh, the sights are quite good. It comes with fiber optic sights. It's actually a three pipe, uh, three dot setup. So for those of you who aren't quite yet on the high-vis front blacked out rear and you'll get there eventually. And as discussed for all my tactical bros, if I lock the slide to the rear and I get out a wrench, I can unscrew the tip of the barrel. Included in the box is a threaded barrel adapter that you can screw on to the end of this barrel to mount muzzle devices with. So if you're shooting steel challenge and you need a compensator to tame the mighty recoil of a 22, then that option is available to you, or more likely you've got a suppressor you want to shoot on it. And we did shoot these guns suppressed. Can't show you because YouTube freaks out about that kind of stuff. But we shot them suppressed and it was a lot of fun and it works just fine. As with everything, there's some negatives. And the first one is actually pretty serious. Um, I don't know how to say this, but SIG didn't really reach out to me when they were trying to name these pistols. So that's why it's got a dumb name that's just a number and a bunch of letters like P322. And that's probably because SIG has named other guns in the past and they've been kind of dumb, like the SIG Mosquito. Like that's a total miss, that's not a cool name. SIG Rattler, that's pretty cool. But I, I have the perfect name for this pistol, the SIG Platypus. The duckbill platypus looks like an impossible compendium of different zoological types. Now hear me out. A platypus is a majestic creature and a true oddity in nature, and so is a high capacity reliable 22 pistol. Imagine what you could do with the roll marks on this slide if this was the SIG platypus. SIG, if you want to send me a new slide for this gun that has a platypus on it rather than P322, I'll be really, really happy. But joking aside, 
the reliability of the gun is going to depend on the ammunition that you use and how those rounds stack up in the magazine. A 22 rimfire is a rimmed cartridge, so they just don't they don't stack in the magazine as neatly as a rimless cartridge like most centerfire pistol cartridges. So to that point, if you take the mag loader device, which actually works really well, I was happy to see most mag loaders that are included in the box kind of stink, but this actually works really well. You can push down on the follower, whoops. You can actually push down on the follower using this little ring and put ammunition in there. So it's very easy for people with like arthritic hands or kids to load magazines with using this mag loading device. Because your thumbs, if you're just pulling down on the little tabs on the magazine, will start to hurt after a while. So the mag loader is really useful. But if you take the mag loader and you run the tabs all the way down and just start dropping 22 ammo in there, what happens is the column is gonna be stacked weird. Like you need all of the cartridges to be kind of angled up about like this. It's not like straight up, but just kind of a little bit up with the nose a little bit up. So if you get a nose down bullet, what's gonna end up happening is the slide will go forward and it won't pick up the next round. With mini mags, which are high quality ammunition and very consistent, that's not so much an issue, but if I also shot this on my own range with the golden bullets from Remington, which has a significantly more like junk on the side of them. And I had to be just perfect for getting these mags loaded because it would go nose down. But I did figure out a solution to make sure that the mags were loaded properly is you, once the mag is loaded, you invert it and then you pull the follower up like that and let it go down a couple times. And if you do this a couple times, it kind of gets all the stack to sort itself out and it works really well. And once I figured that out, I was able to take the Remington Golden Bullets and have the gun run reliably. As far as shooting the pistol is concerned, it's a fun gun to shoot. As I mentioned, the gun returns to zero very well once you understand how to grip it. The trigger is pretty good. And to that point, I took my 11 year old out to the range with this pistol. Uh, previously, we've had a hard time finding guns that fit his hand well enough where he could kind of control recoil and start shooting. We're looking at starting steel challenge. So took this gun out with him and What'd you think about that, buddy? That was amazing! He was able to control this gun, no problem. Got to work on his trigger control just a little bit because he's got a low left issue, but it wasn't bad for his first time out. And that's really what this gun is about. It's taking this gun to the range with your family and basically instilling recreational sport shooting into the next generation of people. And to that end, the P322 does that absolutely brilliantly. It is a super fun gun at a super high value. So big thank you to Six Hour for sharing the P322 with me. I'm sure my son and I are gonna start shooting steel challenge right now as a result. So thank you for that SIG. But now's a good opportunity for you to chime in in the comments. What other videos would you like to see me feature the P322 in? Maybe comparing it to other guns? Silly steel challenge stuff, whatever you want to see, let me know. I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you on the next one.